Hello YouTube, Ugly Prepper. Hope you're doing well today. I've tried to get the camera set up here uh, so you can see what we're looking at today, the subject matter. Uh, on the subject of, uh, let me see, I may need to back y'all up just a little bit more. I've got y'all stacked up on a bunch of uh, milk crates leaned up against an ammo can <laughs> for a camera stand. We're doing it, uh, you know, whatever we got, that's what we use. Okay, so today we're talking about bunkering in, things that can help us in the bunkering in. And y'all apologize for the dust on the lamps. But so uh, we're talking about oil lamps today. Set that aside. Uh, what it means to maintain an oil lamp. I'm going to cut that scanner off before it goes off and makes a lot of racket. So, um, maintaining oil lamps, uh, it's pretty basic. I'm going to trim this wick right here. Every now and then, uh, if, to, uh, if you see that your lamp is starting to smoke up the globe, uh, you may need to adjust your wick. Sometimes just adjustment will work. Sometimes you need to trim it. Um, and we're going to trim this one. There we go. My particular lamps, they take uh, the three quarter inch wicks. Uh, it looks like I've got half inch wicks stuck in them right now. That one actually looks like it takes a half inch. This one takes up to a three quarter inch, but you can put a half inch in there, it'll work. Um, so again, talking about bunkering in, things that can help us when bunk. That one looks pretty good. I'm not going to leave it be. But uh, the biggest thing with oil lamps, uh, other than trimming your wicks, is uh, keeping fluid in them. And y'all, this fluid, it'll just, uh, I don't know, over time, it just dissipates. It evaporates, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you know, these things tend to sit on the shelves for years and years and you know without being used and lamp oil will just evaporate my god I don't recall these things being so hard to get off there we go this is a brand new bottle you see it's got the seal on it but I thought uh, since we survived the tornadoes last night and all that good jazz thought we'd talk about uh, things that could be useful when bunkering in and uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of talk about uh, oil lamps and that type of stuff on the, the prepper channels I'm probably fixing to make a giant mess right here y'all yep but I'm going to fill this lamp up just took quite a bit these high boys take quite a bit of, uh, of oil and you have to be careful I'm not going to dare light either one of these right now because I have oil spilt on my desk that y'all just saw me spill this one looks like it could take a little bit yeah this oil just it'll just evaporate over time it might help if I get that out of the way. Yeah, there we go. We didn't do so bad on that one. <laughs> didn't make such a big mess. That first pour is usually the messiest one. To get those lids on good and tight. Very good. So, uh, let me get this lid on before I make a boo-boo and knock it over okay so it stinks like our heavens in here right now it smells like lamp oil because I just built it all over my desk but anyhow um, maintaining your oil lamps uh, I try to keep all the dust knocked off of mine they will gather dust uh, you know because uh, the power may not go off very often 
but you want to have these bad boys ready to go uh, you know when it does and also I want to talk about uh, telephones I know you guys probably can't hardly see that but this is an old rotary phone the good thing about the old rotary phones is you know uh, no batteries required they just simply run on whatever currents on the phone line this is another phone that just runs this is an older one a buddy of mine gave me this one uh, shout out to Gerald appreciate it um, this one was in an old house of his uh, that uh, was destroyed in a storm and uh, anyway he gave me this one this was an old Emerson phone but it it, uh, it doesn't it doesn't require batteries to work all you do is plug in the line the, from the phone which my phone line is plugged into the router right now that's why I have internet so anyway you say well like the prepper and the SHTF this ain't gonna be no phone service phone lines ain't gonna work well that might be true uh, but let's say you have a short-term power outage okay and your neighbor over there two houses down has a broken leg or needs immediate uh, help if you have a phone that doesn't require a battery you can get on there and make that call get that person some help um, you know all these little cordless phones are wonderful and they're very good to have you know for everyday life but you need a phone that you can just and the reason why I have two phones is because if you're trying to make a regular phone call about anything nowadays, you have to have the touch tones. Everything you call nowadays is mean used for this press one, for that press five, whatever. Um, now's not the time to play, son. But anyway, wanted to do a little talk about that. Um, Having a, having a phone in a, in a power down situation that you can use um, can be very helpful to you and your community, you know. So I want to do a little chit chat about that. Yeah, in a grid down Marauders SHTF full on load the get the mags and the guns and yeah, you may not have phone service, but uh, you never know when you may need to make a phone call. For, for any sort of short-term disaster or, uh, well, not really a disaster, but power grid failure or whatever. So, uh, we'll see. We've got my, my wick trimmed on that one. We can uh, kind of get it back down there. Like I say, a lot of times if you're smoking, you just need to adjust your wicks. All, you, all the older folks already know all this. I, I got that, but, you know, there are kids today that don't know how to boil water y'all and unless it's on YouTube they just can't seem to learn how to do anything so I'm putting this on YouTube for all these Gen Zers and for all the Millennials that don't know how to do anything nothing against you but y'all need to get some skills cause uh, these and, and y'all your older folks could teach you something if you would listen anyway I digress. Uh, but yeah, have you some oil lamps? Of course, when you've got them lit, y'all, you've got to be so careful. Uh, I generally keep one on top of the refrigerator. That way, the dogs can't knock it off. And I keep one in there on my dresser in my room in the bedroom. And when the power goes out, of course, the first thing I go to is my flashlight. But uh, the second thing I go to is something that can burn a while, something that can give you some light. Uh, and uh, it's good to have extra wicks. Y'all, I've got some extra wicks. I actually tried to find them for this video, an extra roll of wick, and I can't find it. But I know for a fact I've got some half-inch wick somewhere because I bought it to put in this lamp. So anyway... I want to talk about these two items short video today hope y'all are all having a blessed day um, like I said we survived the tornadoes uh, 
all the tornado warnings were mostly uh, in the southern part of the state, southern central part of the state, so not where I am. Praise the Lord. Uh, for those people that lost property, uh, and, you know, pray for them. But, uh, you know, from what I understand, no lives lost in, no lives lost in Alabama yesterday. So that's always good news. And, uh, so anyway, we wanted to chit-chat about some oil lamps and some uh, no-battery telephones, things that can make your life a little bit better in a short-term emergency. And this is our video for today. I hope you all have a blessed day. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for those that seem to keep sending people over here. I appreciate that so much, y'all. Um, anyhow, enough is enough. Uh, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you think. Uh, and uh, God bless y'all. It's Ugly Prepper. We're out.